Please welcome on stage to make the opening remarks for the Smart Dreams Plenary Diaspora and Citizenship, Professor Subrata Mitra, Director, ISAS, NUS, Singapore. Excellencies, dignitaries, my fellow members of the South Asian diaspora and guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends. As I welcome you to the panel on citizenship and the South Asian diaspora in the age of globalization, allow me first of all to contextualize this panel because with this panel, we are changing track a little. As you have all noticed, this convention is about growth through interaction. So if you think of growth as a wheel like that one, then the panels that we have had so far are like the spokes which constitute that wheel. For example, the one just before, talking about arbitration, providing a level playing field is one of those. Or like yesterday, regional integration, creating a common market was yet another example. So those spokes constitute the wheel, they are entangled with one another. And the hope is this convention will give this wheel a push and growth will go on and on. If you think of the entire convention in this light, then this panel sits right in the middle of that wheel because this is about the people of the diaspora. People are in the middle of it and this panel would be asking difficult questions about who they are, whose responsibility they are, what is their responsibility, where do they belong, what happens to those who don't quite make it to become captains of industry. These difficult questions need to be asked. They're so important that we have been allowed not just one slot today, but the theme will continue tomorrow with two further panels. They will take the shape of workshops, not in this posh hotel, but next to our institute, in the Heng Mui Keng Terrace, it has been advertised. I'll dearly love you all, if you find this theme interesting, to come and join us there. So, what is citizenship and the South Asian diaspora in the age of globalization? This expression uses a number of concepts which in philosophy of science would be called essentially contested concepts. After all, we have a conversation because we want to communicate and this is not possible if you don't have building stones, which are the concepts. Now, South Asia, diaspora and citizenship in that sense are all contested concepts, let me give you an example. Citizenship of Singapore is not a contested concept. You can have a piece of paper which distinguishes citizens from non-citizens. But when you talk about members of the diaspora, you have to ask yourself, how can you tell who is in, who is out? Are these only people of South Asian origin who find themselves outside of South Asia? How about students, how about tourists? So, if you think about the South Asian diaspora as people on the move between two homes, one they have left behind and the other is the one they're heading towards, chasing their smart dreams. Then you have a mobile people of which we have here a picture, a still picture of that mobile reality. So that is then the nebulous cloud 
that the people of the diaspora are, but it's even more complicated than that. We talk about South Asia. Do we talk about South Asia and think about India, or do we have a grip on who or what is South Asia? Now, if you're talking about the European Union, all members of the European Union have passports which will be French as well as EU. There is no such thing for South Asia. So how do you put together Afghanistan, Maldives, India, and the rest of them together? So if you're thinking about a cloud, it's not a homogeneous cloud at all. It is quite differentiated. Let me make it even more complicated. If you think about a sort of cloud called South Asian diaspora, how can you tell that the one who is in is actually in? Does the person whom you consider to be your fellow diasporic citizen, does he claim to be a part of the South Asian diaspora? Or has he found his new home and has become completely American? And he would be offended if you try to claim him back into your midst. These, as you can see, are difficult issues and what I have done is to list a few questions which should underpin our discussion, not only in this panel, but which will continue in the panels tomorrow. One of the most important questions of um, diasporic citizenship is, how does the citizen identify himself? When asked this question, one of the glorious members of South Asian diaspora, Mr. Sadiq Khan, who has been elected mayor of London, he's asked, so Mr. Khan, uh, who are you? The mayor of London said, I'm a Londoner, I'm European, I'm English, I'm of Islamic faith, of Asian origin, of Pakistani heritage, a dad and a husband. So I'm all of these. Now, that's the kind of malleability the diasporic citizens like to have, which is how it should be. But will this continue when times get really hard? As you all know, behind the Leave Brigade in Brexit were people who were losers, who were complaining against the Polish plumbers. When growth goes on and on, there is room to accommodate the outsider. He's useful. But when growth, Western growth, which starts slowing down and walls come up, will it be possible to be all these things that I have defined as identity in the diaspora? Today, they're chasing after Polish plumbers. How much longer will it take for the next victims to be Indian doctors or Pakistani mayors? Which is why I'm arguing that the issues that we're raising in this panel are not just issues for the specialists or people like me who make a living out of concept shopping, but for ordinary people who are ordinary members of the diaspora too. Again, you would say, do I have the time for that? I have found a little foothold in the suburb of Paris or London. Shouldn't I be getting on with uh, finding proper accommodation, school for my children and a uh, good job for myself? Do I also have to worry about the diaspora? I'm arguing that to trust the invisible hands of the global labor market, capital market, is not enough. One has to be conscious of oneself, of one's difference, and take ownership of the community and the self and find in it some added value. This is why I'm going to ask now some institutional questions. What is the responsibility of the country of origin? Should they only see the diasporic citizen as a source of valuable remittances or also as a responsibility? This issue will feature in our panel quite fulsomely. What is the obligation of the host state? Are diasporic citizens merely an economic asset or is the hiatus between their aspirations to equal citizenship 
or level playing field as you saw in the conversation before, and the reality likely to cause disaffection, alienation, and rebellion. Do they not have to go beyond the finance of it and the legality of it, and to the cultural and moral identification? What obligations do the diasporic people themselves have with regard to the home they have left behind and the new home with regard to their sense of loyalty and the responsibility for bringing up their children to a, in a new world, in a new mold? The questions go on. Diasporic citizens of South Asian origin are often abroad, when you see them abroad, are densely together, much more so than the state they have left behind. So can the South Asian diaspora export something back home so that the states back home could learn to cooperate the way the diasporic communities do? Finally, um, does the South Asian diaspora matter? Do you get a bonus because you are South Asian and there's a financial institution where you are applying for a loan or an investment? Has it got a bonus point? Because I believe it does, and this, I hope, will emerge in the panel. Now, to answer these questions, we have three speakers who are specialists in their own ways. Professor Devesh Kapoor, director of the Center for Advanced Study of India in University of Pennsylvania, is going to talk to us about his forthcoming co-authored book titled The Other One Percent, Indians in America. He will talk about it, so I'll not take much further. The second speaker is Dr. Didar Singh, Secretary General of the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And he would draw on his book, The Politics of Migration, Indian Emigration in a Globalized World from Rutledge. The third speaker is Mr. Danisha Mulloy from the Indian Ministry of External Affairs, and he will engage us about India's um, what the government does about the diaspora. Before the panel gets started, however, I would like to invite our sponsor, Mr. B.K. Modi, to speak, who is himself an illustrious example of the Indian diaspora in Singapore, and uh, who would uh, speak to us now for 10 minutes, I suppose. Thank you very much. I would now invite Mr. Modi to come up. Thank you.